and sisters and brothers, welcome to First Methodist Church of Rockingham. This is the second Sunday of Easter as we're gathering together to worship. We are grateful to be able to gather together in person in our lovely sanctuary. We're also on Facebook Live and on WAYN 900 AM and online. And we also broadcast on Spectrum Channel 15 every Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. Now that service is delayed by a week, but in the many ways that we gather to worship the Lord, we are grateful to be able to do this. At this time, Miss Helen Alexander will chime in the hour and play a prelude to bring us into a more worshipful state of being. Close our eyes for our opening word of prayer. Holy God, what a privilege it is to be gathered in this, our place of worship. We gather together for no other purpose than to worship you. We honor you as creator. We remember that we are part of your story. And the history that you are creating. We praise you as sustainer. And Lord, we know that you are able to renew us over and over. And Lord, help us to be renewed in gratitude for all that you provide and the abundance of blessings that you give us. And help us to recall our responsibility to share generously and joyfully with others. We bless you, Lord Jesus, as our Redeemer. And thus, we rejoice that we live as forgiven people who have been called to take this forgiveness, this good news of the gospel to others. We know that you continue to speak, to make yourself known to us and to those around us, to reveal your purpose for our lives and for this world. Thank you for inviting us, Lord, to be a part of what you're doing. And as we encounter you here this morning, impress upon our hearts the response that you desire from us 
We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in the blue hymnal on page 318, Christ is Alive. I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing this great hymn. going to join our voices now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. This is one of the oldest confessions of our Christian faith that we know of. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes to us this week 
from Psalm 133. I invite you to join your voices together in the reading of God's holy word. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. We come to the time for the prayers of God's people. And this morning early, um, I had a phone call from Lisa Ledford. Lisa was, uh, she's our lay leader for this month and was going to be doing the announcements, but she has no voice uh, at whatever's got a hold of her. And she doesn't know if it's allergies or what has knocked her down. So pray for Lisa uh, that she'll have a good, quick recovery. Uh, I received news of Jackie White, uh, that Jackie is in need of our prayers. So we lift her up before the Lord. Uh, what prayer requests or praises do you have as God's people here this morning? Titus Lyles. Pam Dillman. Roger Friend. Audrey Neely, continue to lift her up. Okay, we got a couple going at once here. Brenda? The family of AG Player. The family of AG Player. Yes. Yes, we received news of that this morning. AG Player's family, yes. Others? Micah Way. Please keep Micah in your prayers. Pat Smith. Pat Smith. Pat Smith. Okay. <coughs> Jeff Gardner. Gardner. Okay. Jan Clay. George Huey. George Huey, yes. Others? The Harris Murphy, the Harris Murphy Harris family. family. Okay. Others? Yes, we are having a called annual conference coming this Friday for our clergy and then Saturday for the laity. Uh, I'll be going on Friday and uh, Glenn Alexander will be going Saturday. And this is for the purpose of uh, selecting delegates that will go to the first general conference, uh, which be, will be held later in the year in Costa Rica. So pray for us as we discern uh, who it is that will be going to represent the North Carolina Conference at the first Global Methodist Church General Conference. So keep us in prayer, all of us, and as may prepare for that conference as well. Others? All right, let's bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment of silent prayer. Uh, this will give you an opportunity to lift your prayers up before the throne of the Lord. After a brief time, I will lead us in prayer. Together. Holy and righteous God, remind each of us in our hearts, our spirits, that no matter the situation, no matter the problem, no matter the trouble, you are with us. You're always ready and willing to receive our prayer request. You are always more than capable of bringing healing and wholeness and peace and joy, redeeming us, renewing us, restoring us, refreshing us through the rebirth offered through Christ into eternal life, now and always. Lord, we're just a week out from Easter. And we are an Easter people. And I pray that we still carry the joy from that day so that every day we will live well. You are an awesome God. We give you praise and honor and glory. 
your steadfast love endures forever. We celebrate, Lord, what you have done in our lives and you're continuing to do and what you're offering to do in this community. So, Lord, all the prayer requests that have been lifted up, the ones that are spoken and unspoken, Lord, take them, please, and do what you alone can do. Help us to cooperate with your spirit, to trust in you, to have great faith. And help us, Lord, to rest in your mighty power. We thank you, Lord, we can offer these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our ushers come forward, but before they gather, I want to uh, say thank you. Once again, thank you. As a congregation, we made you aware of the need for the organ, for the fund, some $64,000, and that has been met. Did you hear me? That has been met. Praise God. <laughs> Well, Mr. Lutok is beginning to do um, uh, some repair work. He's gathering the materials that are needed and will be moving forward. Now, we do not have the time frame as of yet, but I just want to say thank you and thank God that we've raised the money for this. I appreciate you all for being faithful in giving of your tithes and your offerings. And so now at this time, we give you an opportunity to do that once again. Holy God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Guide and Friend, we are thankful 
that we can stand here and offer these gifts to you on behalf of your children. You have provided for them, and they have shown that they are not dependent on their earthly wealth, but dependent on you. They give of their tithes and their offerings. We ask that you bless them so that they might be a blessing. And Lord, help us to have wisdom and discernment to know how to use these wisely to bring about your kingdom. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe it's time for the children to come forward. Day. We are so happy you're joining us. You're back from vacations and you're ready to go back to school tomorrow. Yes? No? Oh, I bet some parents are ready for y'all to go back to school. Mm, I bet your teachers have been missing you really, really bad. Well, today we're going to talk about big sin and little sin. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Do you know the definition of sin? Sin is a word. It's a thought or act against the law of God. What we need to know is there's a difference between big sin and little sin. Do you know that? Is it okay if we sin just a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's right. They are big. Cuss words are big sins, aren't they? And, um, if someone asks you if they look pretty in what they're wearing and you say yes because you didn't want to hurt their feelings, even though you didn't like the dress they were wearing, is that a little lie because you didn't want to hurt their feelings compared to someone in court who has promised on the Bible that they have to tell the truth? So if they lie when they're standing on the, in the court, is that a big lie? Or if you steal a 25 cent 25 cent piece of candy, is that a little sin compared to someone who robs the candy store, which is a big sin? How about if you paint or hit someone on the playground? Is that a little sin compared to really pushing them down hard on purpose on the playground? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Did he do it for everyone or just the ones who had the big sin? So let's look at the example again. Wouldn't you agree a lie, big or small, is still a lie? And stealing something small or large is still stealing? And according to the Ten Commandments, that's wrong, isn't it? Thou shalt not steal. And hurting someone a little or a lot, that's the same. It's not nice. So I would say any sin and all sin are the same. There are no big sins. There's no big or little. They're all sin. And Jesus would still have, have to die to overcome that sin. So what do we need to do when we sin? We need to remember that it's a word. It's a thought or action against the law of God. And the Bible tells us in 1 John it says that if we're sorry for the things we do, we confess our sin, all our sin, and he will forgive us from those sins, and he will cleanse us from those sins. <coughs> you see, God sent Jesus to be our sacrifice for our sins, all our sins, because we, every one of us sin. Nobody in the world does not not sin. So everything we do, if we sin, we are to ask for forgiveness and not to do that sin anymore. And he is faithful. He will always be there for us. All of us. So don't think you're a bad person because you sin. But you have to go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And ask him to be your friend. Because he's always there. And he'll be our helper. And he'll be our friend in God's presence. 
He can do that, can't we? Well, in a minute, we're going to go to the altar and pray. But this morning, we're going to stay in church so we can do communion. So we're not going to do children's church. But I do have some coloring sheets for y'all and activities for y'all to do at your seat. So get one of these, and then we'll go to the altar. <coughs> and then we'll go to the altar to pray. Hey, Lee. Haley, can you pass them out? There you go. And there you go. Yes. Yes, sweet girl. Here you go. Thank you, our dear Heavenly Father, for being faithful to forgive us for our sins and for sending Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins and to be our helper. Lord, we do ask in Jesus' name that you forgive us for our sins. And we thank you. We want to be your hands and feet and tell people about you. We love you so, so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Mary. Thank you, children. And children, we welcome you. We are grateful to have you with us today and thankful that you're going to stay with us for worship uh, through our time of sermon and communion. Today we're going to be reading our sermon text from the New Testament letter, 1 John. We'll read all of chapter 1 and just a couple of verses from chapter 2. I invite you to hear the word of the Lord. And our prayer is that God will add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word on this day. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at. And touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard we also declare to you so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of God. It's for us, the people of God, and we should say, thanks be to God. Will you join me in a word of prayer over our sermon reflection here this morning? Pray with me and pray for me, please. I, I'm going to read part of a prayer that John Wesley wrote, and then I'm going to complete, conclude it with my own words. So let us pray. 
O oh God, you have glorified our victorious Savior with a visible, triumphant resurrection from the dead and ascension into heaven where he sits at your right hand. Grant, we beg you, that his triumphs and glories may ever shine in our eyes to make us more clearly see through his suffering and more courageously endure our own. Being assured by his example that we endeavor to live and die like him for the advancement of your love in ourselves and others. You will raise our dead bodies again and conform them to his glorious body. Call us above the clouds and give us possession of your everlasting kingdom. And I pray. Oh, but here now, Lord, as we continue this race that you have set before us, we continue to struggle with our flesh and our sinful nature. Help us, oh God, to be ever mindful of your promise to us that if we will only confess our sin, you will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us to walk in the light as he is in the light and to forever enjoy your fellowship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. John, in this letter to the early church, is really preaching a sermon. This is some 60 years approximately after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, they estimate this was between 80, 85, and 95 when John writes this letter. He is working to establish, first off, how he and others like him, disciples and apostles, the earliest followers of Jesus, how they know the truth about Jesus and the good news of the gospel. Well, how do they know that? They know that because this is a personal account. This is an eyewitness testimony of the word of life they were able to walk with and talk to and touch the very Son of God, Jesus the Christ. And it was from him that they received this message of eternal life that comes in and through him. And it should be noted that this personal relationship with Christ was experienced before and after the resurrection. And I find it interesting that John, though he's writing some hard words, some difficult concepts and truths to us and to the early church, informs us that he's doing this so he can make his joy complete. The joy of having initially witnessed the sacred, it, it's made complete by sharing that, that testimony, that encounter, sharing it with others. And this is part of the issue that takes us to task today as Christians. How do we speak the truth to others in a loving way, guiding them onto the right path, but not out of some sort of selfish Christian pride, but out of the joy of seeing them come to know the love and the forgiveness of Christ. Seeing them experience being transformed and made new, made whole. And the only way we can accurately do this and effectively do this, authentically do this, is through our own testimony. Being a witness to the sacred because you and I, we experience the presence of God, the power of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace of God, communion with God. We experience this here and now. And yes, in the midst of all of this, we have struggles and we have troubles and we have trials and anxiety and fear. Can somebody give me an amen out there? Am I the only one? We're all experiencing this thing called life. And it's far from perfect. In this fallen world, even though we have been given a glimpse of glory and brought into the presence of God through salvation, we still have those days where we struggle. So how do we share that with others? Don't you think others around us might want to know that? Shouldn't we tell them? something about our struggles and, and about our redemption from sin and death. Now, you, you might not be like me, a person with a checkered past, because testify, I got that. 
Maybe you think your life is boring and uninteresting. You don't have anything to tell. Well, how about this? All have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. None of us are perfect. None of us are sinless. You all have a testimony. You all have a witness. Every one of you. John makes it clear. If we claim to be without sin, we're deceiving ourselves. The truth is not in us. Our God is the God of light, the God of truth. And I mean truth with a capital T, meaning that it's true always, everywhere, all at once. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And he said he was light and he shines He shines. Our Lord Jesus will shine on any half-truth or untruth and expose it for what it is. We are a week out from Easter. And we imagined the darkness of death giving way, yielding to the light of the world, Jesus Christ, as he rises from the dead on that Easter morning. As the stone is rolled away in that dark tomb and light floods in, I think light was flooding out. The light of Jesus resurrected. I read this past week Dr. David Zarison from Concordia University in Texas. I think he said it best out of all the things I read this week. He said this is important for us to understand if we're going to grasp the meaning of resurrection for us today. God is light and we who are darkness have been given the opportunity to walk in the light. We who live in the forgiveness of sins purchased for us through the cross and through the empty tomb and guaranteed to us by the indwelling of the power of the Holy Spirit where we are sealed and nothing can take us from the hand of God. No matter what challenges we face, no matter what the world throws at us, we can't avoid these things. We'll be completely free from them, but we can overcome the world through our faith. Surrounded by darkness, we can walk in the light because we have fellowship with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. And John knows that this is important for him to pass on to us, and I'm passing it on to you, my dear children. I write this to you so you will not sin. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the Christ, the righteous one, the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not just ours, but for the entire world. John's goal is to have us carefully plot our lives, our course to walk with Jesus in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with him and with others and to let that light shine. To tell others that the blood of Jesus can purify them from all sin. And this is a hard truth for some, but I believe we all have to face it. There is a reality about the church that we seem to be pretty silent about this, or maybe we've just become dangerously comfortable with it. We are Christians who worship a God who is light, and yet we carry around dark things. Dark thoughts, dark words, dark emotions, dark actions. We carry them around with us. And if you walk into a room With the light and you find a dark space, where is it going to be? It's a shadow and it's the farthest place from the light. And there are so many that sit in churches around this country and they have fallen into the lie that has been passed on to them, which they they had a term for it in seminary, uh, moralistic uh, therapeutic deism. And what it means is we've been told we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good inside. We're good. You're good. You're all good. Everything's good. Everything's been blessed by the Lord. Everything's acceptable. That's a lie. An entire generation has bought into this. We're not good. We're not. Our hearts are desperately wicked. We lay awake at night and plot how to do evil. We're told throughout Scripture that we're devoid of good. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags. The only righteousness we have is through Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, the church needs to come to grips with this. Once again, we need to come to grips with it. We're not good, but we're striving to be good through Jesus Christ. We're striving to be remade in his image, to be like him. 
We're striving to come from those dark places and draw closer and closer to the light. And just as Mary was teaching the children, when we fall short in our thinking and our acting and our ways, we're not reflecting the perfection of God. When we fall short, we're like darkness in a lit room, hiding from God. And John's trying to tell us we need to confess. We need to get down on our knees. We need to say, oh God, I have failed you. And I'm calling out to you. I'm asking you to forgive me for my sins. See, confession should be a normal part of the Christian life. It should be an ongoing activity. Because confession creates a clean relationship. And one of the reasons that the church here in America and around the world is having so much trouble reaching out to the community is because too many sit on some kind of high religious horse and they judge everybody around them like they're so much better than they are, like they're perfect, and we're not. And I'm going to tell you a little secret if you don't know it. The community around you, they know you. They know your church. They know your reputation. So we need to confess our sins. We need to get our hearts right with the Lord. You see, Jesus was the friend of sinners. And somehow the church has forgotten that. We need to be the friend of sinners once again. We need to confess the hard things, the bitter things, and get right with God and get out into this community and win people to Jesus. That's why we're here. So here we are, the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, we're going to transition here just a little bit to Holy Communion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up by, by saying this. Remember, Jesus is offering forgiveness to any who repent of their sin, who confess it. It's free for you. He paid the price. But you have to be willing to say, Lord, I've sinned. And I want to be made right in your sight. So I'm going to Declare this part is over in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The choir is going to sing an anthem for us. And then after that, our brother, Reverend Robert Macy, is going to preside at communion for us today.
Amen. Would you like to follow along in our blue hymn this morning, starting on page 12, in our service of word for our communion service? Christ our Lord invites all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not heard the cry of need. Together we pray. We have some joyful obedience. We pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proved God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. For a time of peace this morning, I would invite you to sing our sanctuary uh, verse. I'll print it in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna is the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us made with us a new covenant by water and spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took the bread he gave thanks to you and broke the bread he gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and when the supper was over he took the cup he gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, you offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offerings for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because we are one body, there is one loaf. Broken, torn apart for you and for me. For all. In the same spirit, there is one cup. For we are one church. For you and for me. And for everyone. Thank you, God. For the servers come forward. We're going to have you come down the center aisle, and then you'll go either left or right back to where you need to be.
gracious and holy Lord. Maker, designer, lover of all things, visible and individual. You have given us this most perfect gift. And his name is Jesus, our Christ. We give you thanks for this holy meal today. It may give us the strength to go forth, to live out the gospel that you have taught us through his word and through his life. Give us the strength and courage as your disciple, O Lord, and as your church. We ask this in your most holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Sisters and brothers, if you're able, please stand as we sing our last hymn found in the blue hymnal on page 420. Breathe on me, breath of God. The altar is still open if you need to come back and pray about anything. And if you need us, let us know. We'll pray with you. Sisters and brothers, we are grateful that we've been able to gather together. Thank you for coming and being a part of our service today. We are a chosen people called for the purpose of being sent. So go, therefore, and shine the light of Jesus Christ into the darkness. Speak truth to lies. Love in the midst of hatred. And live as those who belong to another. In the power and the promise of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. May you be blessed. Amen.